couple of things um, that I hope maybe answer your question. Also, were inspired by I think Alex said it. Is it? Hi. I, I use drop a lot. <laughs> um, I heard you say something about how this whole thing has a low entry point. Um, but I do sort of see it as ha having a high ceiling. And as a middle school math teacher, I haven't developed this as much as you would probably need to to be able to teach it. But I wrote down the things that I had said for someone who asked, because it was a very visual thing that I said. So um, in the question, uh, like Adam was saying, of how do you know which primes to investigate, this was really nice, because 100 has a, a perfect square root. When we open it up to a 200, that might be a bigger question for students than we gave credit to in the moment, because as a seventh grade teacher, I introduce irrationals to my accelerated students. Uh, in number sense with irrational numbers, I know it, even with these accelerated students is really tricky. Um, and as soon as you open up 200, which has an irrational square root, and this whole investigation revolves around knowing the square root of the number, that might be something that's relevant to high school students. Um, also, this statement that I just sort of put out there is 100 being the sort of like the multiplicative midpoint between 1 and 100. Like, that connects to geometric mean. I don't know if that's a, you know, solving proportions where you have maybe one ver the same variable in this place. I don't know if that's something that's relevant. It could be a binomial. It could be like an x plus 1 in, in the, the two mean positions that need to be multiplied. I don't know. There's just ideas that I haven't fleshed out because... I teach seventh graders, and we haven't had a need to go there, but just a seed to plant. Like, how could you develop? Is that something that could be developed? 